live? Stream, you stream, because you stream great. Right? Let's see what we got now. Now it's saying live. Here? Are we back? I think we're back. Okay. Well, I think we just like, I thought I was live for a long time and we went through a whole long spiel about cats and stuff and I wasn't actually live. <laughs> well, how, do I, how do I find you if I hit live on the channel? Uh, it, it might just take a minute to show up. We were, we decided to check. No, now it says you're live. Yeah. We decided to check the stream quality. I've been sitting here streaming and jabbering and all that stuff, but apparently the stream has just been going into the ether. No, you guys missed it. It was the best show ever. Um, I don't know that we can recreate it. I, you know, it's like the Tenacious D song tribute. We're just going to have to make a tribute to the live show. Or I may have misunderstood how to see if you were live and you could have been live the whole time. I don't know. That's possible too. Because <laughs> we'll now out. I just see that there is a little circle around you that says live. So, I, did, I, don't, I didn't see that before. Mm, well, and I might not have known to look for it, because I'm not a YouTube <sighs> aficionado. So, you could have been live the whole time. This may be... Also, it may so just you, be the lost stream. It says you're live. Oh, there you go. Is the quality okay? We, um, we just... We, yeah. The only reason we stopped was because I was like, we better check that and make sure the stream is like even working, because it was kind of messing up. When I was talking to uh, talking to Ragman when it's, we first started, quality's out. good, and you are in fact live. You could have been live the whole time because I didn't realize to look at your little profile picture and see where it says live. We live, baby. So, you know what we're going to do? We were doing we're doing a top ten list about our cats, but I feel like we're just going to have to do a different top ten list yeah, now you because just move on at this point. you know it's already like beating a dead horse. If we do it again, <laughs> we're at the end of the list. Uh, let's see. What would I pull up? Oh, we're going to change it. And I feel like... Let me, let me take this... Uh, we're going to start fresh. And I took my mic down a little more because I was... I feel like I was really loud. I could see it peeking red. This is the stream where we work on the things. All right. Onward. But you know what? It's only 9.15. Maybe the stream is straightened out now. Maybe it was on time. I didn't know. I, I doubt it. I, I don't think we were streaming there for a while. So, oh well. Lesson learned. I, I think what happened, and I didn't realize this, but I have to have YouTube Studio pulled up to get the stream to start. Yeah, you know, used to I would do, if I'm remembering correctly, this was some years ago, but back when I was streaming on Twitch, I would just use OBS and hit go live. And I wouldn't have to even bother with having it, having um, uh, the browser window pulled up. So, I don't know. You learn something new every single time. Hopefully the quality is good now. Hopefully. And... Maybe, maybe we're, maybe we're good. All right, next, we're doing another 10 list. I'm gonna have to change the title for this uh, video when it's available, because it's not gonna even be about cats anymore. Cats, be gone. We're done talking about you. I just talked about you for like 20 minutes. What is this list? I don't. Even, I didn't even look at what this list was called. I know it's about celebrities. Everybody likes celebrities, right? You like celebrities, Megs? Ten actors who had really weird jobs before finding fame. But you guys are curious what kind of job I had before I found fame. So I'm, I am apparently an Instagram celebrity. I got an email yesterday from a person that said my Instagram account one of a, one in a million and that I needed to email them back because I qualified for a special tool that thousands of creators have used and it makes them like super famous like I'm just one email away from becoming incredibly famous on Instagram apparently you know you guys should be 
you're welcome for the privilege of being able to be in my stream right now because I'm only one email away from being like really, really famous. <laughs> I read, actually, if you look at my Instagram stories, you can, you can see the, uh, I, I read the email verbatim yesterday. Ah, <sighs> 10 celebrities that had weird jobs. Number 10, Brad Pitt. Did you know Brad Pitt did something weird before he was an actor? What makes, what kind of job would you think Brad Pitt would have? Underwear model. You think Brad Pitt was an under, underwear, underwear model? model? Before Brad Pitt made it big in Thelma and Louise, I've never seen that movie, and a host of other iconic roles on the silver screen, he was a chicken restaurant mascot. <gasps> ah, I didn't know that. How interesting. That's not an underwear model. Maybe he still was. Maybe that was his first weird job and they went on to another one. But I feel like an underwear model is like sort of connected to acting or modeling in general. <clears throat> yeah. It's being being pretty. You got to be pretty to be famous. But no, not always. Uh, when Brad Pitt was a young man, desperately trying to fight through the maze of Hollywood's... Uh, hang on. I think my chat's... Hold up, hold up. We'll start by reading that in a second. I, my chat window is messed up. Okay, okay, let's just take this one and skip it over. I saw the question mark, Ragman. Rag just asked me, are you able to see chat? I, it just like a little piece of it flashed. I had my old chat window pulled up from the last time we were doing the live stream. Uh, let's see. Rack says, and you're back. I'm showing you've been streaming for one minute now. Two minutes now. You're already pretty famous in our books. Are you able to see chat? No, but thankfully the question mark popped up like the very tail end, like next to the heart. But what I was doing in my, I usually do a pop out on my chat. So I pull it over to the side. When I restarted the stream, I'd left the old pop out window open and just assumed my chat would be there. I don't know why that was silly of me. I see, I messed up. Everything's all messed I should not have messed with it. That's what happens when you mess with the stuff. It's not. It's just like, this is a thing. This is a day where I'm learning the quirks of YouTube. That's what's going on today. And I learned several quirks today. I learned when you restart the stream, you've got to refresh your browser window and you got to repop out the chat. You got to basically start up. You got to start fresh. You can't just turn the streaming software back on. Okay. Uh, hey, Ragman, welcome back. Is everything looking okay now? Megs said it was. She checked on her phone, but who knows? I, I tried to make it. I tried to make it more better. All right. Now, back to Brad Pitt, because I know you guys are. You're probably wanting me to get on with it. Rag says quality is quite good. Yes. I like here. When Pitt was a young man desperately trying to fight through the maze of Hollywood's audition process and casting decisions, he still needed to pay the bills and keep food in his tummy. <laughs> Who wrote this article? His tummy. His tum tum. His will belly. <laughs> oh, Brad Pitt's will belly. His will belly's empty. He's gotta go be a chicken. <laughs> So he turned to a fast food joint to make some consistent cash. Well, you know who can feed his belly? Fast food place. I bet he also got some free food. What do you think? I don't know. He, yeah, he may not have been able to eat that. That's true. Megs has a good point. Mm, yeah, Megan keeps me shredded with the food she feeds me. Oh. Um, I do have a wheel, wheel tummy. It's wheel. I used to have a real big tummy. You don't have a little tummy. You have an abs. <laughs> <laughs> abs of steel. Um, and even though the job was a bit embarrassing, it gave him what he needed a wage and time to practice his lines on the side. So. There was a guy, Brad Pitt, in a chicken suit practicing lines at one point. That's interesting. That 
is interesting. So Thelma and Louise was his first movie. I learned something new. I didn't know that. I haven't even seen that movie. Johnny Depp, oh, Johnny number Depp. nine. Interesting. All right, Meg's prediction. What was Johnny Depp? What do you think Johnny Depp's first job was? His weird job was. Uh, Meg's Johnny is guessing. Depp. I'm gonna say. Meg's guess is janitor. Um, I don't have a guess. Rex says, I swear some of these internet articles are written by people with a ninth grade reading level. You know who they're written by? Millennials. <laughs> our generation. I, I, don't, I don't have a lot of faith in our generation. What, what? what was it? Oh, Johnny Depp. Before reaching worldwide levels of fame and acclaim in Edward Scissorhands, that was his first movie. I have seen that one. Yeah. It's a weird movie. Yeah. Pirates of the Caribbean and a million more movies. No, no, you can't do that in an article. He's not been in a million more movies. That is hyperbolism. Hyperbole. This article is hyperbolically charged. Rack says Johnny's from Kentucky, so it might be something you you won't expect. He worked. He cooked fried chicken. No, I was just You're guessing. guessing fried chicken. Yeah, because, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken. I think maybe he worked at the door. He was a jockey. Show. Oh, yeah! That's what I was going to say! The horse show! <laughs> What's that called? Not the horse show. The horse show? No, the no, the derby. Called? The Kentucky yeah, Derby. The Kentucky Derby. That's yep. what I was trying to say. I didn't get it out in time. He was, he was a horse stall janitor. Oh, yeah! He was? Are you serious? No, oh. no. Megs is getting all excited. <laughs> But the strangest job was as a telemarketing rep for a pen company. In that gig, he had to try to sell special pens to strangers over the phone. I worked um, as somewhat of a telemarketer. Yeah, Megs, Megs did the telemarketer thing. Kind of. I, when I was in college, I called the school to ask for no, She solicited donations. The very first job I ever had was loading Coke machines. Back in my day, a Coke was only 50 cents when I loaded the Coke machines. And the Coca-Cola company, like they, they didn't send out like a salesperson to load the machines. They would just leave the product there and then the people that had the store would load the machines to get the money out. That's the way that worked. Then, and then it stopped working that way at some point. Uh, Rack asked cans of Coke or bottles. It was cans, 50 cent cans. And there was not a dollar slot on it. It was it was change only. And I remember when they put the the bottle machines in, and the Coke representatives came out and changed it out, uh, changed out the the bottles. But they were a dollar. They went up to a dollar, and I remember thinking to myself, "Man, it's like double the price." True. We went from twelve ounces to twenty ounces. Oh. Yeah. So, I feel like Johnny Depp's job wasn't as interesting as Brad Pitt's. Christopher Walken, number eight. <clears throat> and Rack says, I and I bet. <laughs> so, so Christopher Walken. And Rack says, I bet you couldn't put in the the Susan B. Anthony coins either. No Sacagaweas. <laughs> yeah. Foreshadowing for his appearance in the Moby music video. I think yeah. that was his best best performance ever. That's a pretty great music video. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, what's what is the name of that song? You can go with this or you can go with that. Yeah, no, there's a there it's it's named something completely different. Don't drive me crazy. I'll think about it. I bet Ragman knows. He knows stuff like that. Alright. Christopher Walken is known for taking on weird roles in Hollywood. Even in seemingly normal roles, he has a certain unspeakable quality about the delivery of his lines. Unspeakable. Unspeakable. And the look, look on his face. 
So it makes sense that he had a really strange job before he even became famous. Yeah, I bet he had something pretty strange. Rack says, Funk Show? No, it's something, like, something dangerous. Something or other. That's gonna drive me crazy, though. Hey, Max, what, you have dirty hands? Will you look that up? That's gonna drive me crazy. When he was 16 years old, Walken joined a traveling circus. Oh, ho, 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 and became a lion tamer. Now that, that is a no, weird cool. and interesting job right there. Christopher Walken, you, sir, are in the lead. Congratulations. about to read uh, this would have been in about 1959 when the New York City born Walken left home dropped out of school and went off to find work taming some of the most notorious felines around the world now how did they know that what give what gave them notoriety the felines that's pretty cool lion tamer Uh, Rack says, I remember that video too. Hello, Ackerman Levi. Said, Ackerman Levi says, hi, my gym bro. Hey, bro. What's up, bro? Are you a gym bro as well? Welcome to you. This is your first time in the stream. I know I read your name before, but I'm glad you're here. All right. Next. Celebrity. Fat boy slim, fat. That's okay. Okay, I was completely wrong. It's not Moby. I think it's fat boy slim. Sorry if I offended you, fat boy slim or Moby, by calling you one or the other. They're, they're definitely gonna be <laughs> <watching>. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know that Moby and fat boy slim, one or the other, you're definitely here watching right now. And I'm I'm sorry if I insulted you guys by calling you. Uh, this, that was that was a long time ago when I. I'm turning 40. I'm about to be 40 here in just about a week. So, all right, Hugh Jackman, how excited are you about this one? Oh, uh, I like, I like Hugh Jackman. The Wolverine. Yeah. Ackerman yeah. Levi says I do calisthenics. Hey, calisthenics are great. I actually started out my gym career basically doing calisthenics. Rack says weapon of choice. The song wasn't memorable, but the video was. That's right. I don't know, the song's kind of memorable too, because it's like, you could go with this, or you could go with that. You could go with this. I could do that for my, my video, uh, my uh, stream, because I got two cameras. You can go with this, you can go with that. You can go with this, you can go with that. Which one do you guys like better? You like the side view or the top down? I, I think it depends. It depends on the situation. But I kind of like the top down. Okay, but what was you back on? Oh yeah, back on Hugh Jackman. Okay. I'm guessing. Before Hugh Jackman became math Hugh Jack's man. Yeah. He's a math teacher. That's my guess. <clears throat> Ackerman Levi asks, where are you from? I'm from Vietnam. I'm from Alabama, United States of America. That's pretty cool. So you watched him from all the way over, which way is it? So actually over there. You're, you could go. You could go either way, really. That's all the way over. Earth. Uh, all the way over on the other side. I mean, it's, honestly, it's not a whole lot faster What's either way. The time change? Huh. I, I'm not sure. What is so? What time is it there, Ackman Levi? Hugh Jackman, before he became a famous actor known for his role in things like X-Men and his Tony Award-winning skills in live theater, Hugh Jackman got to practice his craft as a birthday party clown. Ah. Nice. Now that'll teach you some humility right there. That's good. For a long time as a young man, Jackman had a quirky and memorable and frankly a little bit degrading job as a birthday clown. Well, they're calling it degrading. Yeah, some of the some of the writing yeah. I think that's great. He learned not to take himself too seriously. I think that's a big that's a crucial I feel like the best actors are the ones like that. The ones that, you know, they're like more easy going. You know, they're not too worried about, they kind of don't take themselves too seriously. I don't know. Like Chris Pratt, I feel like he's got those qualities. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, agreed. 
Jackman says it's 10.32 p.m. here. What time is it there? It is 9.32 a.m. here. So, like, almost exactly 12-hour difference. You are plumb right on the other side. Uh, your day days and nights are flipped from me. Uh, Rack says, again, the writer inserts their own opinions. I know. Typical, typical millennial. Millennial writer, writer attitude right there. Matthew McConaughey. I bet he worked at the strip club. And wasn't he in Magic he Mike? Yeah, and he was like, "Hey, hey, hey." He was like the main. Uh, he was the main man, man pimp, man pimp. The man manager. <laughs> the man manager. Yeah. <laughs> I used my quote fingers for that. <clears throat> Uh, Rack says, in my part of Indiana, it's 10.33 a.m. here, and we're one hour apart. Ackerman says, just done my workout and saw you live. Man, I'm glad you popped in. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Ooh, I can't work hey, out that way. If you have questions about what I'm doing, I'm making pottery here, but if you have any questions, just, just stop me, and I'll answer them for you. This is what I do. I'm Chad Lloyd Nelson. I make pottery for a living. Been doing it for 15 years, and uh, that's me. Make the pottery, and here in the stream, we just chit chat and jibber jabber about stuff. Matthew McConaughey. What was his weird job? We find out. I'm gonna guess. Hey, can you guess? There's one word said three times at the beginning of this article, Megs. What word is it? Yeah. Yeah, and the, no, no, like the first three words in the article, there's one word written three times. All right, all right, all right. Oh my Let's God. clean out. <laughs> Let's clean out some chicken coops. When Matthew McConaughey was a young man studying law at first and then film, he won a rotary scholarship that allowed him to travel somewhere around the world. He picked Australia and somehow wound up in a very small town called Warnerville. It's nestled in the middle of nowhere along the central coast of New South Wales. There, McConaughey got a job supporting himself by cleaning chicken coops. It was a rural place, and nearly everybody in town had a farm or worked on one. So it made sense that McConaughey had to literally get his hands very dirty to fit in. And fit in he did. Do they think that he cleaned the chicken coops in their Is that what they're telling you in this article? Because I don't think he did. You know, the, the article... The way the article is written is almost as entertaining as the content within the article. Uh, Ackerman says, wow, cool job. Yeah, man, thanks. I enjoy it. It is fun and satisfying work. Now, now I just splash some clay on my camera. Hopefully it's still not too dirty. Number five, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, whoopee. Whoopee. I wonder what her first gig was. I'm going to guess. It'll probably tell us. That she worked in a donut shop. Megan guesses donut shop. Uh, I don't know. I, I have no clue. What all was she in? She was in Sister Act. She, she started out in Star Trek. Didn't she? And she was in Star... Oh, yeah. She was Guinan yeah. on The Next Generation, which yeah. was the best of the Star Trek series. I don't know if Star Trek was there, but she was in that. And, you know, I think that was one of her... That was... That was... Yeah. Alright. Let's read about... Oh, what did Ackerman say? Ackerman says, How long did you work out to get that physique? Uh, well... I need to do a stream where I go through what I what I did, but I started a long, long time ago. When you were thirty, that was when. Like that was what you remember about thirty. <clears> All right. Be. So the timeline, I guess the short. Let's do this real short. We'll we'll, end, we'll pause. We'll hit a pause button on the top down or the uh, top ten list for the actors and the jobs or whatever, and we'll talk about fitness and stuff for just a minute. So. When I was 27 was really when I started 
uh, when I was in college, about 23, I was like 50 pounds overweight. Uh, I was quite fat, very fat. Uh, I played World of Warcraft. I drank a lot of beer. I drank a lot of Coke. I ate a lot of fast food and I ate like all, I stayed up all hours of the night. Did not exercise. Did not exercise. I, <laughs> I was not in good shape. Uh, but when I was about 20, I now was fat after college for, let's see, we got out about like 20, 24, about three years after. And me and Megan, my wife, you can hear in the background, uh, we decided to do P90X, which is a uh, beach body back in the day. It was real popular back in the day. It was a DVD set. We bought it. It was really expensive. I think it was like $200. And we had to buy a pull-up bar and some weights and stuff. <clears throat> it was a big investment for us at the time because we hadn't we had the business, but we hadn't started making money yet. Uh, I did that program uh, the first time, and I lost some weight the first time. I started losing weight. Uh, I lost about maybe 30 pounds doing that, and it kind of just. Um, inspired me to keep going and then through the years since then so like when I was 30 uh, I did it for a couple years off and on and when I, when I was 30 I set the goal to have a six-pack by the time I turned 30 and using P90X and I also started doing uh, running I did a lot of running and I started doing calisthenics like you just said you're a calisthenics guy I did that push-ups pull-ups uh, body weight stuff. I did uh, just dumbbells. And then a few years later, I invested in some equipment, or I got some uh, gym equipment, and I got into barbell training. So bench press, squat, deadlift. Uh, I started, and what? Heavy. Yeah, I started some re real heavy lifting. Um, and I, I went on my first dirty bulk. I actually gained back about half of the uh, half of the fat that I had uh, lost by just eating all of the things and lifting all the things. <clears throat> but then eventually, uh, I got my lifts up to really respectable numbers in powerlifting because I got big into that for a while, and then in Fast forward to like just the last five years, I've been basically just kind of in maintenance maintenance mode. I lost all the fat back off that I put on by dirty bulking and I've kind of just, um, what I do now is I just kind of eat around what I would guess is my maintenance calories. I try not to lose weight, I try not to gain weight and I just lift hard. And you don't drink. Yeah, and I don't drink anymore. Don't really eat much fast food anymore. Do not drink soda. Do not drink soda. Um, pretty. I guess I'm pretty disciplined now. Anyways, that went on longer, longer than a bit or two. Whoopi Goldberg. Do we, we? We're still on Whoopi, right? Yeah, I thought she was gonna be donut shop. Donut shop. Yes. Oh, and then uh, what I do now? I didn't. didn't do that. I do just maintain, but I still do barbell lifting, but I do it more circuit training. So I'm about to turn 40. I used to do like real heavy deadlifts. So like my deadlift at one point, I was 140 pounds and I could deadlift over 400 pounds. Um, but I don't go over 225 now. So my workout weight last week with deadlifts was 185, but I do a lot of reps. Uh, Rack says your fitness journey is interesting. Don't worry about taking the time. Yeah, but I want to hear about Whoopi. I'll, I'll do a whole nother. We'll do a whole thing about fitness yeah, one day. Yeah. I'm gonna bring some pictures. I'll bring receipts on one of the streams because 23-year-old uh, me looks like an eight, eight forty-year-old me. <laughs> I was, I was quite rotund. I'll bring pictures one day. We'll do it upright. Uh, but now I do uh, lighter weight circuit training type stuff. And when you say lighter weight, that's 
a lighter weight for me. So I'll still, it's like my last bench press weight was like 165. Um, if I were doing heavier, I'd be more in, in the 200 to 225. <clears throat> Rack says, sounds like a dream Joseph had in the Bible. I lost the thread on that one. What's the thread on that one, Megs? My fitness journey? <laughs> How does it relate? All right, Whoopi. Whoopi Goldberg. Before she became famous for movies like Ghost, Sister Act, and its sequel, and decades before she transitioned to become the mainstay host helming The View nearly every single daytime TV morning, Whoopi Goldberg liked to play with dead people. Okay, that's not quite a fair characterization. Instead, we should say that she liked to play with their makeup. See, in her younger years, Whoopi became a licensed beautician. She had gone to beauty school, studied all the things she had to learn, taken the exams, and successfully licensed herself, and she was good at it. But one day, she needed a job, and no beauty salons in the area were hiring. One place was, though, the funeral home, and they needed a mortuary beautician to put makeup on dead people in preparation for heartfelt and mournful family funerals. Needing to pay her bills, Whoopi jumped at the job. I did hair and makeup on dead people. Whoopi once casually explained in a 2015 video about her early life. There was an ad in the paper, and I'm a licensed beautician as well because I went to beauty school. That's, that seems like it'd be a hard job. I don't, I'm not I'm not the kind of person that's equipped to, to work in that field, I don't think. Some people are, though. That's, uh, she did not work in a donut. <clears throat> and Rex says fat me eating thin me. <laughs> oh, that, I get that. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, number four, Angelina Jolie. What did she do? Her, didn't, her father is a famous actor, right? Ackerman says, actually, I'm a student. Saving my time. That's why I do calisthenics instead of going to the gym. Hey man, that's where it's at. One common thread for my entire fitness journey is I never went to a commercial gym. Only ever worked out by myself at home. Uh, no excuse. Like you have no excuses. I guess you could find an excuse, but for me personally, like I have no excuse for not going to the gym. I have a gym, so why would I not use it? And YouTube. Yeah, and YouTube. You got all the got all the workouts you could possibly ever want. When Angelina Joe Lee was a young woman, she dreamed of wanting to be Oh, what was the question? Oh, didn't she have a famous actor father or something? I think so. Rax says John Boyd. Okay. Ackerman says, wait, are you a Christian? Indeed, I am a Christian. Ackerman Levi. I am indeed. What about you? Uh, when Angelina Jolie was a young woman, she dreamed of wanting to be one thing more than anything else in the world. That's right. She wanted to be a funeral director. Wait, what? This seems too closely related to Whoopi. They could start a place together. They wanted a second career. The world famous actress and human rights activist actually got her start feeling the deepest depths of empathy because of an unfortunate funeral situation that she experienced as a young woman. When her beloved grandfather died, pre-fame Angelina and her family were very upset with how the funeral was carried out. They felt that his memory wasn't honored in the manner in which they were hoping for. They were also left miffed at the funeral, funeral industry as a whole. And so, she quickly sprung into action with thoughts of doing it differently. Hmm. Ackerman says, I'm a Christian too. Yeah, very cool, Ackerman, that's awesome. Christian, Christian lifting bros. Uh, well, did she actually do that or did she want to? She just wanted to be. See, like this one, this one's a cop out. Like it doesn't belong on the list because she didn't actually do that. She just wanted to do it. Next person, doesn't count. Sean Connery. Oh, I love Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Uh, 
artist. Charismatic dude, that, that Sean Connery. Let's keep the theme going with the Death in the Afterlife as a place for jobs for future stars, or at least one more celeb on this list, shall we? Eh. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is tip top A quality article right here. The A lister in question this time around is none other than the one of the most famous James Bond leads of all time. Sean Connery. Way back in the day when Connery was a much younger man, he worked at a funeral service spot in Haddington, Scotland. A man named Ronald Stark and his uncle ran a few businesses out of that spot, including a woodworking shop, a wagon manufacturing plant, and a coffin and mortuary service. Sean fit in perfectly with that last gig and had a successful job for a while polishing, cleaning, and bleaching coffins. Well, maybe maybe it's like a common theme among actors. Like they, they have the realization, they're like, well, guess I'm gonna die. Better enjoy it while I can and go do something awesome. Rex says Stark Industries, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I didn't even notice that, but... Good catch. Good catch, man. Number two, Danny DeVito. I like Danny DeVito. Did you know I met Danny DeVito? <clears throat> My Megs, uh, did you? Yeah. I didn't know you met Danny DeVito. I kind of. I'm kind of. Where? Oh, yeah, you were at like a Hollywood cafe or something? We were at Hard Rock Cafe. Hard, Hard Rock Cafe. <clears throat> Yeah. My daughter watched Twins last week. Did you tell River that you met him before? I think I did. I mean, I, I usually tell people that I get to meet him. Any chance you get to tell people you met Danny DeVito? Uh, Ackerman asks, which denomination are you from? I'm non-denomination. I am uh, Lutheran. LCMS Lutheran. We're not the crazy non-Christian Lutherans, but we're the ones that are from like the 1500s. The we're, we're the conservative ones. So, like, our denomination popped out... Oh, my TV's gonna cut off. <laughs> Hold up. Our denomination popped out of the Reformation and just, like, didn't change for 1,500 years. That's how traditional I am. 1,500 years? Or not 1,500 years. Sorry. <laughs> Since the year 1,500. <laughs> In the year 3,000. In the year 3000. Yeah, but it hasn't changed since then. I mean, might as well just keep going. 500. Yeah, that's right, Rack. 500 years. Martin Luther nailed his, uh, his, his papers on the door. And, and that was that. All right, Danny DeVito. Ackerman ass Lutheran. Yes. Indeed. Not the crazy ones. Not the crazy, uh, what's that creed called? The spark. We're not the crazy Sparkle Creed Lutherans. We're the, the Nicene Creed Apostles Creed Lutherans. And very conservative, yes. Very traditional. <clears throat> the newest hymns we sing are from like 19, uh, no, 1867. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they're a little newer than that. That was that was hyperbolism, hyper hyperbolic. And we'll continue the coffin theme. Deathly reveals a past celebrity. Really, another one? I thought the last one was the last one. With yet another funeral-related gig. This time around is actor Danny DeVito. He may still be a beloved actor in his old age, and he may have had many iconic a role in a million different movies. Again, not a million television shows. And uh, perhaps a Jersey Bikes commercial or two. I haven't seen those. But one of his earliest jobs was as a hairdresser at a morgue. Really? That's like three in a row. I think it might be. I think maybe, maybe this, the person writing this article is just making it up. <laughs> Number one, Jim Carrey. 
I think Jim Carrey did something interesting. Ra Rack says, did you see him in Haunted Mansion? I did not. I have not seen Haunted Mansion. Uh, Jim Carrey. It's very difficult to imagine Jim Carrey doing anything other than acting. The comedian uh, slash film star has been making the world laugh for decades now. He's an incredible performer who commits fully to every single role and has a knack for doing voices, faces, impressions, and more with perfect comedic timing to boot. But while Carrie was always funny, even as a young boy growing up in and around Toronto in the 1960s and 70s, he wasn't always on the fast track to stardom. In 1978, just at just 16 years old, Carrie was forced to leave school to help his impoverished family learn, support themselves. Tracking out on his own to find a way to make money, the liar liar actor lived in a tent at one point. And for more than two years, he made money working as a janitor in a oh. factory. Someone was a janitor. Yeah, there was a janitor on the list. That's right, the man behind the mask, Ace Ventura, and a million other... They, they do that every time. They say a million other things. Well, that was fun. Jim Carrey was a janitor. Uh, the guy that played Reacher? Chris Pratt. I do like him, but that's not Um Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. I don't know enough about him. Well, what did you think about the top 10 list, Megs? Did you learn anything? You know, the tail end of that list, I feel like if they were going to do like a, a 10 list, they should split up the funeral gig, like well, stuff. I mean, a lot of actors and actors probably had to go on that list and you start seeing a lot of repetition. Yeah. Yeah, those are, I don't know. I wasn't super thrilled with the with that top ten list. No, uh, that was um. Yeah. I like the lists. Oh, I still have the fun facts pulled up. Hmm. Let's do learn some fun facts, and for five minutes until we wind the stream down. I'm going to do a few more. How many mugs have I made? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty. Hey, sixteen mugs. That's pretty good. I'm running out of table space. I have run out of table space. So they're going to get to land in the floor for a minute. <sighs> no, I'm good. Fun fact. Mickey and Minnie Mouse's voices got married in real life. Imagine that. I wonder if they like role played as Mickey and Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Makes it ugh. Oh, Minnie! I'm not even gonna go there. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> hey, we have date night. But you know what? You put a damper on it. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna? You wanna be Minnie? I'll be Mickey. No. Uh. Uh, sorry I'm so sniffly today, guys. I'm so allergified today. Fact. Fun fact. Queen Elizabeth II was a trained mechanic. Well, alright. As a teenager, Queen Elizabeth II joined a British employment agency at the Labor Exchange and learned about truck, engine, and tire repair. Oh, interesting. Elizabeth II, that's the queen that we just had not we, but we didn't have her. I don't know. I don't keep up. Last queen we had was like a long time ago. There's never a queen. Yeah, but I mean, back when you know we were part of the um, we were a colony. <sighs> Fun fact: thirty-seven. There are a ton of these. There are like hundred and fifty of these things. We've been working on these for a while. The real name for a hashtag is Octohorp. Hmm. 
yeah. <laughs> That'd be hard to say. Like if you were making a post on Instagram, you're like, hashtag funny, hashtag reels, hashtag pottery. You'd be like, Octothorpe pottery, Octothorpe funny, Octothorpe. <laughs> it, we would abbreviate it. It'd be like Octo. Octo, Octo funny. Rack says, oh, I knew, I knew the Octothorpe one. I had no idea. Did you know that, Max? Huh. Fun fact 38. I did. I knew this one. The Easter Island heads have bodies. Yeah. Yeah, they're just like way underground. Or broken. Uh, sniffle monta. I know. My, yeah, that's bad. That that should be my um. That's how I should. I should cut this uh, video. Is is just. Just a sniffle montage. It's so bad. Maybe I should go on some allergy medicine. <sighs> some programmer came up with the name Octothorpe, I think. Rack says. Yeah, that sounds like something a programmer would do. <laughs> the computer guy. Uh, 39. Salvador Dali designed the Chuppa Chups logo. What is that? Chuppa Chups is a type of sucker. I don't particularly remember what the Chuppa Chups logo looks like. They're good. Another candy one. Up next, M&Ms are named after their creators. So is the rapper, Eminem. He's, well, he's, he's named after himself. You know, his name is E-M-I, or however you spell it. You know, spelled out Eminem. But his name is Marshall Mathers, so it's two M's. M&M's, what were their names? Forrest Mars. Oh yeah, Mars Candy Company. And Bruce Murray. I feel like Bruce Murray probably got the short end of the stick on that one. He didn't get the candy company named after him. He was the silent partner. Alrighty. A couple more. I'm glad we finally got the stream straightened out and got it working again. Fun well, fact, Vatican City is the smallest country in the world. I feel like I knew that one too. Incredibly, it's 120 times smaller than Manhattan. You know, I don't have a frame of reference for the size of Manhattan because I've never been there. So, and that, that really kind of means nothing to me. I gotta trim that one better than what I trimmed it. Alright, we're gonna do two more. I hope they're good. Fun fact, 42. The letter J was the last added to the English alphabet. Huh. I feel like J and J and J and What would you do without them? Without K. You so, say you were going to... What, well, how would you spell jump rope if you had no J? But it wouldn't be gump rope. Well, why couldn't it be How would you spell Jurassic Park? Okay, maybe the G and J, you need to spell K. Alright, K. Kangaroo. No, then it would be kangaroo. That sounds Japanese. Kangaroo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that anyway? Oh, the little guy. Yeah, oh, oh, Naruto. He was like, Konohamaru. Ah, last one. The moon has moonquakes. It doesn't seem fun at all. It's not fun. We have to end on a fun fact, not an interesting fact. That's fun fact, ketchup used to be sold as medicine. Oh, that's interesting. What did you make? 
What would you have? Yeah. Phone's ringing. Yeah, they're gonna leave me a voicemail, I guess. <clears throat> Fun fact: my phone was ringing. All right, you guys. The stream started off a little rough because I finagled the things and I messed it up. I made the quality too good. So good that my, I guess my internet or my computer or YouTube or something could not keep up. And it was bad to begin with. I guess I might have to go back and maybe like like that or something. Ow, my face is itching. Also, I have concerns about the audio with this one because I have seen my mic peak in a bit. I bet it's gonna be. This one's gonna be, this might be a lost episode. It may just be like a, well, I did, huh, and I thought I hit the record button, but uh, we're just going, we're away. This one, this is just a train wreck. All right, we're gonna chalk this one up to train wreck episode, but you guys watching this, if you could stand and watch, from the beginning you're still hanging you're watching this after the fact hey thanks for watching thanks for being here pop in with me live sometime and um, let me know let me know in a comment that you're here be great still just getting started on the YouTube this is like week two streaming maybe we're about to go actually I think we just started week three cool it's been fun thoroughly Doing. I think we've, we're kind of hitting our stride. Hit a little hiccup speed bump today with the quality stuff. But I think the stream's clearer and I think it's going to be easier for me to edit things. <clears throat> Maybe not easier, but I'm going to have a better time editing things with better quality. So I like to zoom in on stuff. And this way I think we'll be not, uh, not all pixelated and bad looking. We're going to make the stream less bad. That's the goal. That's, that was the goal of changing the settings. Got it worked out. And it's only up from here. Anyways, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back on a Monday. If all goes according to plan. Actually, I have a doctor's appointment Monday. Hopefully, I'll be back. I may start late, but I'll update uh, the, the Discord. Maybe do the community tab thing. But uh, I'll let you guys know. But hey guys, thanks for hanging out. Uh, Rackman, Ackerman, hope you guys have fantastically phenomenal evenings, weekends, and uh, hope to see you again. Catch you on the flippity flip.